we'd like to take one more look at how to use a conditional formation constant to calculate the concentration of a free metal ion in an EDTA solution. We're going to look at how you model EDTA titration curves today, and the use of the conditional formation constant is a central skill in accurately predicting the shape of an EDTA titration curve. This will be a similar example to what we looked at on Monday, except this time we're going to change our ion, which changes the value of the formation constant. We would like to calculate the concentration of free magnesium 2 plus in a solution of 0.1 molar magnesium EDTA complex at a pH of 9. The formation constant for the magnesium EDTA complex, MgY2 minus, is 10 to the 8.79. This is from table 12.2 in Harris. And the alpha value for EDTA at for the Y4 minus form of EDTA at a pH of 9 is 0 0.041. And that comes from table 12.1 in Harris. All right, so what we have here is an equilibrium situation where any free magnesium in solution is being released from the magnesium Y2 minus complex to yield free magnesium 2 plus ion and free EDTA in a variety of protonation states as products. We can use the reaction for the formation of magnesium Y2 minus to calculate the concentration of free magnesium because what we have is a situation where we can look at the equilibrium either in the reverse or the forward direction provided we have the right value for the equilibrium constant to calculate the concentration of magnesium because an equilibrium reaction can always be read forward or reverse. So we're going to treat this situation like we have magnesium 2 plus reacting with EDTA to form MgY2 minus, except in this case, we're going to treat the equilibrium constant like the reaction is proceeding in the forward direction, even though the product is already there. So our conditional equilibrium constant then is what we use to calculate the free magnesium 2 plus concentration. And our conditional formation constant is equal to the magnesium Y2 minus complex concentration divided by the magnesium concentration times the total EDTA concentration. From an ice table, we can take that then to be the concentration of MgY2 minus is going to be 0 0.10 minus x, the concentration of free magnesium is going to be x, and the concentration of free EDTA, which comes from the breakdown of the MgY2 minus complex, will also be x. So our conditional formation constant becomes, from the ice table, 0.1 minus x divided by x squared. The conditional equilibrium constant is equal to the alpha value times the formation constant. The alpha value is 0 0.041. The formation constant is 10 to the 8.79. Make sure you're getting accurate numbers when you enter this on your calculator. If you're having trouble with your calculator syntax giving you a usable value for the formation constants based on the values given in Harris Table 12.2, that's a good thing to ask me about during office hours or class or some other time. 0 0.041 times 10 to the 8.79 is equal to 2.53 times 10 to the 7th. So this is the value of our conditional formation constant. We're going to solve this expression, 0.1 minus x divided by x squared equals 2.53 times 10 to the 7th to get our free magnesium concentration. Because the conditional, e the conditional formation constant is so large. As usual, we can make a simplifying assumption, but in this case, we'll make it in the numerator, that the x, the amount of free magnesium that's been released from the EDTA complex, is very small compared to 0 0.10. Our equilibrium constant is significantly larger than 1 times 10 to the fifth, so generally we'll be validated in making that assumption. So we're going to simplify our numerator only and call it 0.10. So we're really solving 0 0.10 divided by x squared is equal to 2.53 times 10 to the 7th. And that gives us 0 0.10 is equal to 2.53 times 10 to the 7th times x squared. To solve for x, we're going to divide both sides of the, the equation by the value of the conditional formation constant and take the square root. x then is equal to the free magnesium concentration in solution, which is equal to the square root of 0 0.10 
divided by 2.53 times 10 to the seventh. Square root of the whole thing is 6.29 times 10 to the negative fifth molar, which is our free magnesium concentration in this solution. So take a minute to process that. If you have any questions at all, that's an excellent thing to ask me about on Zoom. Make sure all the steps in using this conditional formation constant to solve EDTA-based equilibrium problems make sense, because we're about to use this skill as a key piece several times in modeling an EDTA titration curve. And I'll see you there in a minute.